Welcome to the third video in this series and in today's video I will show you my picture editing process in Adobe Lightroom along with some awesome hacks for faster editing. Let's get into it. My process starts by copying the images over to my computer. I love order so I actually have a very specific way of organizing and backing up my images as well as organizing Lightroom catalogs which is super important in the long run. If you're interested, you can check out the video I made specifically about that. Can't forget about the good music in the background. Usually, I put some lo-fi playlist on YouTube or Spotify. When the music is set, I go through all of the images quickly once and look for the ones that are really bad quality, blurry or, you know, just accidental shots. I reject them by hitting X. I give rating 1 to the ones I like on a quick glance, even if there are 2 or 3 very similar ones. They get the 1 as this is just the first sorting round. If there is any image that I absolutely love, I give it a 3. After I've gone through all images once, I delete the rejected ones. Then I apply a filter to show me only rated images and my second round of sorting can begin. Here, I choose the winners of duplicates by giving them rating 2. Now, the actual editing can begin once I filter images with the rating 2 and above. By the way, if you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, check them out because I've covered my full photography process from photo settings, perfecting autofocus as well as raw format, which is essential to master editing, to my actual shooting process in the POV video. Moving on to editing. First thing I do is go to the develop module and get the image straight if needed by hitting auto straightening. If that doesn't work, I do it manually because the slightly angled image is extremely unprofessional. Further, I fix anything else that is wrong with the image. For example, if there is a dirt sensor spot, um, I would get rid of it with the spot removal tool. After that, I usually go through my presets and see if any of them fit. If they do, great. If not, I will make my own edits. The secret of making presets work with your pictures is to shoot them in RAW format, as I said. And since most of the times my presets work quite well, let's just apply one. But don't stop here. It's quite a big misconception that people think that it is enough just to apply the preset. No, you most certainly must adjust highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, sometimes also contrast, exposure or even temperature. I personally even go into HSL panel too, um, you know, to increase or decrease the saturation of some color, you know, that feels very unnatural. Just remember that presets are a base for your edit. It gives an overall look of the scene, but it is up to you to polish it and finalize it. Presets are absolutely amazing, but they don't have the power to fit on every single image because what if you had an image that was underexposed? You will need to bring up shadows to fix that. And now let me show you three cool tricks you can do here. Hit Command C or Control C on Windows to copy the edit. And I usually untick local adjustment, transform, spot removal and crop checkboxes as I don't want to copy those. And then go to another picture that is very similar. Let's say there is the same scene, you shot one picture in landscape mode but the other in portrait. Just hit the command V on the unedited image and you will copy over the same edit. Alternatively, you can also hit this previous button. Uh, and it will give you the same effect. However, if you're jumping between different pictures, it's better to copy paste manually. Number two, hit Y on your keyboard to see your before and after images. Super useful to see if you haven't gone too crazy with the edit. And number three, after I've edited all images, I will then choose the ones I like the most and give them highest rating from three to five. Then I usually create a collection and put those edited ones in this collection. For example, this would fit into a city or Copenhagen collection. So that half a year later, if I do another photo shoot, I can drop them in here and find them later when needed. Okay, and the last thing that remains is to export all of these images. And that I'm covering in the next video where I talk about not only how to export in the best quality, but also how to upload them to places like Instagram without losing any quality. So make sure you check it out. See you there then.